What's up, bro? Hey, how's it, brother? Um, groovy, man. Groovy, groovy. Groovy. On a Sunday afternoon. But, but it's hey, not bro. Sunday, man. It is Thursday. Hump day. Last Aloha. night. Aloha Thursday, man. Aloha Thursday. Yeah, last night. Uh... Last night was a good show. Yes, it was, man. I I, I had a lot of comments today. Uh, you know, people that saw a different side of Mr. Green and really appreciated what he said. The fact that uh, you know, I mean, a miracle, right? It's it's yep. a miracle. There's no medical explanation why uh, Estelle Green is alive today. And uh, you know, I think it was it was good. It was a great message for yesterday because because of, of what it was going on yesterday and you know I, I'm just getting tired I think everybody's getting exhausted of the of the negativity and and yet you know we try to we try to bring on some positives we try to you know tomorrow we'll, we'll be we'll have three local businesses it'll be a fun night two of them are kids man two of them are kids two entrepreneurial youngsters that have uh, created a business because of COVID and, and we'll, we'll post everything up tonight after the show. But, you know, we try to, we try to bring out as much positive, but you know, when things happen, um, we, we got to share it. And, and, you know, when things happen, it's, we believe, Charlie and I both believe that, and that's why the show still exists is because we want to educate and inform, you know, inform and educate the public, our viewers, the people have a right to know what's going on. And um, and that's what we try to do. And uh, tonight we have Melissa Bolton, one of our viewers, one of our heroes. She's a you know she's a, an amazing person. She'll be on to share her experience. Uh, she took her second shot, uh, the COVID second shot for the, the COVID nineteen vaccine. So she'll share her experience uh, with that. But we also want to talk about what's going on in the state as far as the numbers, man. Over 300 cases today, Charlie. Over 300 cases. And as social media was blowing up with mm -hmm. concern, right on the coattails of that came the announcement that the lieutenant governor is now uh, wants to implement a moratorium on gatherings because he is still convinced that the spread is all due to community and that it is not the travelers. And I, you know, I, I tired of debating that issue. Uh, you know, we have one of our viewers that posted quite a bit today about the airline industry. If in fact the travelers aren't bringing the damn thing in, how are all our airline employees getting sick? How are our flight crews testing positive? How are the employees of these airlines getting sick if it's not coming from the travelers? Mm -hmm. Knock it off already. It's time to call a spade a spade. It's time to deal with what we got and address it and stop punishing the locals, the residents for crap that you guys lost control of. And I'm talking to you, state leadership. I'm sick of it, man. Tired of it. The first response, Charlie, every time is, you guys got to behave. You guys not wearing your mask. Okay, fine. Now we're going to put a moratorium on gatherings. Moratorium on gatherings, but it's okay we load up on plane with two, three hundred people less than six feet apart. That's fine. But you as families cannot get together for two weeks. Screw you. I'm over it, Charlie. I, pr I told you, man, I, I, I needed to take, gotta take some downers before I come on this damn show tonight. I'm so pissed off. Because we, we called it, Charlie. Everyone called it. The numbers. We never, get, we never see the Christmas numbers yet. And sure enough, and our Dr. Behrman, thank goodness, allowed, told, advised our mayor, don't rely on a 14-day cycle for safety. Use a two-cycle period. 28 days. And that's what we're seeing. Tomorrow is, 20, uh, tomorrow is 14 days after Christmas. We're not even near the New Year's numbers yet. So, you know, Lieutenant Governor, Governor, whoever the hell else in that office that makes these decisions, except the fact that all this shit happened once we opened up travel from the mainland. That's when it started. It didn't start because of Christmas. It didn't start because of families and 4th of July's and 
No, it's because you guys opened the gates and you're not protecting us and I'm over it. Thank you, Charlie. I'm done. I think what you got to do is you got to, we got to look at, <clears throat> they, they don't want to share the number, but we got to look at uh, where, where these numbers come in from. That, that, that's all to it. Because I would say in order for me, I mean, I, for me personally, I would look at, if they can show me that a lot of the numbers are being caught down at the airport, yep, we're on the right track. But, you know, nobody knows about the contact tracing program who, see, that I always caution, and I told my wife this today, you got to be cautious about one thing. And that is when you look at numbers like this, what's important is one, either these numbers were through some type of surveillance program, which I don't think there is, or two, one or more persons got sick and seek medical attention, which started a contact trace investigation. That's the only way. So what I'm worried about is the people going inside a hospital, you know, when they tested and they're in the hospital. We know there's a whole bunch over at QMC, Queens Medical Center, right? It was just posted the other day. Those kind of stuff, it bothers me because anybody that's checking in for any kind of, you know, anything, whether it's an overnight uh, surgical procedure or whatever at QMC, you run the risk. I mean, it's like Maui Memorial, right? You have this parameter, you have this perimeter. And once you break the perimeter, bingo, you go in there and there's a likelihood you'll get infected. So, you know, it's, it's stuff like that, okay? But that only accounts for a small number of the 200 count. I like to know where the others are. If they would just tell us what part of the island then you can have a better look because, hey, you got family there, I got family there. If they said, oh, Hawaii Kai, my son lives in Hawaii Kai. Hey, at least I tell my kids, hey, be on alert, man. Some, because at one point, you remember when the safe ways had the breakouts? At least they was letting everybody know it was at the safe ways. So what did they do? You took extra caution, you went there. Maybe you had to let the temperature die down for a while and yeah, you know, possibly Safeway lost business for maybe about a week or so. Hey, but at least you never get cases from there anymore. You know what I mean? It, 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 it washed itself out. But, you know, it, it, it's sort of funny that, you know, and, and you can see, cause I did a post as well. I know they were gonna say something like, you know, we're doing good this week, we're going, doing good this week. And I kept on saying, Hey, don't get too ahead of yourself. Don't get too ahead of yourself because why? The thing will come and bite you in the Ocoli. And sure enough, that's when I saw the number come today. I had a funny feeling from yesterday. I had a funny feeling from yesterday. We, we knew, Charlie, we talked about this. I mean, we talked uh, offline, of course, we talked about this. We, we knew that this was going to happen. We just knew, everyone knew this was going to happen. I think it's been being being uh, spread around by so many people. But this yeah. is the problem. This is the problem. Our mayor on Kauai is the only mayor that releases the numbers, travel related, non-travel related, or still under investigation. We don't know. The gov Lieutenant Governor comes out and he said, by far it's community spread. Well, listen to me, Lieutenant Governor. Okay, because you're a doctor and a politician, I'm an investigator. This is the deal. You have a visitor coming in from the mainland on one test, one test, takes a test on the mainland, gets a negative result, comes to your wonderful island of Oahu and goes and just does his and her thing. Take positive people traveling around your island, going to restaurants, going to salons, going to all of your, your, your uh, attractions, you guys all excited, open the zoo. Yeah, you're going down to the beach, congregating, right? Of course, it's okay for them. Don't you dare, residents, you local residents, don't you dare do that. But the tourists, hey, whack them, go for it. They go back home, they get sick. We don't know. All of the contacts that that person had come in contact with, and it doesn't have to be a hotel worker. It doesn't have to be a taxi driver. It could be a non visitor industry person, that person gets sick. You go take a test, you're positive. 
Contact Tracer calls you up. Have you come in? Have you traveled? No, I haven't traveled. I haven't left Honolulu since this whole thing started. Community spread. Community spread my butt. You came in contact with an infected tourist that wasn't caught, wasn't on quarantine, just came straight in on one damn negative test. So, so Doc Green, don't tell me that this is all, all community spread. You don't know because you have not done your job as the administrator of this program to identify and isolate those positives coming in. I thank God our mayor did what he did. I thank God that, that he took the, and yeah, I know a lot of people pissed off. I know one guy posted, who will pay my bills, Mel, you? That's a really stupid question, right? I mean, listen guys, you, you consider your options. You wanna take a risk, take a risk, as long as it doesn't impact anyone else. Go do what you wanna do. But this virus don't give a damn, and it don't, it's, 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 it's non-discriminatory. But I just get really irritated when you blame the, the local residents and, and calling a damn case community spread when we don't know for a fact, just because that person never traveled. Well, you know what, guys? The virus doesn't grow on trees. It gets here. And we are letting thousands and thousands and thousands of visitors from hot states come here unscreened and allowed to to mingle with our local people. They get sick, visitor goes back, leaves the damage behind, and we call them community spread. We blame the residents. We tell them, you know what, two weeks, you guys cannot congregate with anybody. No, no, a moratorium. Not a moratorium. How about put a moratorium on travel from these states that are blowing up? Governor, Lieutenant Governor, what's wrong with you guys? What is wrong with you guys? So easy. Blame the locals. Blame remember, the locals. Remember what, they, remember what they said before. They said that over a certain number, it, it'd be very, very hard to, um, it'd be very hard to contact trace, right? They, they told us that already. So what, what do you do when it's hard to um, trace? The, you punt, and the easiest thing to do is say it's due to community spread <laughs> because we have no other answers, right? Now, if you was given a third option, I think they would use that option too just to spread it around and make it look nice. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's... Exactly, uh, Charlie. Yeah, it, and, you know, I, I've been posting... I've been posting one of our air carriers, you know. I've been posting... And, you know, been following that. And again, you know, I, I don't know where, if it's uh, flight crew, ground crew, but it's, it's somebody because uh, I think today they had 50 tested and they had like close to 40, right? Close to 40 yeah. tested positive. So you figure uh, five, that's close to 80%. Infection rate, eighty percent. Ooh, that's that that is that is some mean stuff. That you know, I mean, it's it's almost it's almost as if they're passing somebody and they go, Phew, and and they're catching them. So now, what will be even more interesting to note is again, with high numbers like this, are the testing labs, both state and DLS, are they are they looking at uh, are they looking at possible variant to see if it, it landed out of these bunch? It would be nice to know. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, uh, you know, I, I gotta tell you, man, um, when I hear from people, when we hear the stories that we heard last night, when we hear from Lana and, and all of our guests, well, Russell and all of our guests that we've had on, and we hear, and that's what frustrates me, you know, Charlie and, and our viewers out there that we have been on this, we meaning all of us, everyone in the world have, have been on this, 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 this horrific journey, COVID journey, and uh, we cannot get it right. We cannot get it straight. We, we're, we're told, we're continuously told that it's safe in a plane. It's safe, safe, don't worry. It's safer in a plane than in many other locations, but it's not safe for you 
to have a gathering with your ohana, practicing social distance and wearing masks. No, 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 for two weeks, because you guys are the problem. That's how I took that message today, and that pissed me off, as you can tell. That pissed me off, because that's not, that's not, I, listen, I am not saying that is not happening. I am not saying that we're not getting clusters from funerals and from parties. I'm not saying that. But don't punish one part of the problem and not, not the, what I consider the bigger problem. See, because as long as we bring in virus, we allow virus to come in from these states that are blowing up. How do you expect to do anything positively? No, you ain't. Sorry, that's just the way it works. That's math. That's just the way it works. You bring in more than you can clean, you, you can always be overloaded. And, uh, and, and that's, to me, we just get too many high paid people that should know that. And uh, so, you know, they're gonna watch this tonight, Charlie, after we go off the air, they're gonna watch this, they're gonna get upset and tomorrow they're gonna come down with the hammer again on the people and they're gonna blame Charlie and Mel. Whatever, do it. Sorry, Charlie. I'm gonna be quiet for the rest of the show, guys. I, I just, I had expected that to come on at the end of the show, but I just uh, irritated. But Melissa is here, so we're gonna, Put our happy face on now. And then, you know, hey, she's nervous. But. Bing. <laughs> That's the doorbell. Yeah, she's connecting audio. <clears throat> yep. Uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> I hope I didn't scare her. No, she's. Okay, hang on here. Melissa. There she is. Where? Okay, she's got to unmute. Sweetie, you got to unmute your microphone. And. Mute. Okay. Oh, okay. Now, now we, we got to ask. Now we got to ask this question. Okay, here she comes. There she is. Ta -da. Hi. There's <laughs> Melissa. How are Hi. you? Sister? Good to have you on. Ladies and okay. gentlemen, this is this is Melissa Bolton. You've seen her on mm -hmm. the, our show as a viewer. You've read her post on Facebook. She's uh, she's a tiger, a tigress. I love no, reading her post. I love reading your post, Melissa. I love, I just love, I love you for what you do. And I, I, I just very proud and honored to know you. I never met you in person. But once, when Charlie does his concert, after all of this, we'll definitely get a chance to meet. Yeah, that would be awesome. I can't um, wait. I can't wait. I'm like really nervous. This is like <laughs> totally out of my comfort yeah. zone. But um, I well, think it's important to, you know. Well, let, let, let us, let, us, let the, the viewers know, because you did post when you took your first shot, right? Yes, on um, December 16th, I did. And, and then I took my second um, January 6th at 1 p.m. 1 p.m. And you're feeling a little bit. You uh, feel I got a shot shot. This is a shot shot. This was um, a little bit harsher than. Um, so so what do you. Why don't you tell the people, uh, what do you mean by harsher? Like, what, what, did you have a fever? Um, what, 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 yes, what? I got a... Well, let's, I mean, listen, let's start with the first shot. Let's start with the first shot. You got the first shot. You was all excited and happy. And Yes, I was happy. Um... <laughs> I got it um, on the December 16th. They offered it at our M. TF and um, I, you took I shared that um, I, um, I shared that I, my husband lost his brother on November twenty second, um, and yeah. um, it was um, very um hard to um, watch um, him. I said I wouldn't do this until like the end of the show. <laughs> But it, it's it it was hard to watch him um hurt 
Yeah. And um, and um, I said I was, you know, gonna get it, get the shot, and um, do it for everyone, our community, um, myself. I mm. um, I have a lot of health issues. Heart. So, so when you took the first shot, you really, um, mm. really didn't have any. That from what you said, no, spoke, you no, 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 uh, not this, one. This this time on the six, when you took your shot, the second shot, mm -hmm. you, mm -hmm. did you, did you feel it like within the first half an hour or so, or it was no. like, it was like no. hours later you started to feel. Yes, it was um, when me, so I took it at one. Um, so about eight, I started to feel like um, body aches. Mm -hmm. aches mm -hmm. But it, um, it's, I've never felt these kind of aches. It's like, just, I don't know, but yeah. it was harsh. Yeah. And then I felt warm mm -hmm. and um, I took my, temperature and it was it was first 99.8 and then it went to a hundred point two I took a Tylenol kind of like get it down but um I I couldn't even get comfortable in my bed it just ached but not as it was just achy, but it wasn't as bad as say, I've heard COVID patients having it. Like, I mean, it's just all over their body, but it ached. Mm -hmm. I, I had a headache. It was um, a real um, mild headache, but it was just like right here. Mm -hmm. And then I took Tylenol, drank um, water at room temperature tea and then um it went away mm -hmm. i got it up this morning again just warm took a temperature and it was um a hundred point two and i was kind of cold body aches but it wasn't as like severe it just felt like i needed to i don't just it just ached I don't, I can't, I've never felt aches like this in my life, but it wasn't as um, harsh as I've heard COVID patients have. So I don't think it's on that level, but I did have aches. I took Tylenol. Um, my temperature went up to 101.2. Took Tylenol came down so it, it it's been roller coaster. a roller coaster okay yeah. so what about now how are you feeling now right now, now? i am at 98.8 i'm okay um i have minor minor aches but not how i felt last night i mean i couldn't even get comfortable mm -hmm. in my bed i just kept on like tossing and turning and tossing and turning but other than that i mean i i'm okay. okay that was the pfizer vaccine yes yes so you were you were one of the early ones i guess um how many have uh, have you been in contact with others that, that yes. took the vaccine yes. with you and, and what what yes. was uh, what was their, their did they have so any i talked to one of our um doctors and he said um so him and i took uh around the same time he was right before me so he got a really high fever i mean um i asked him how high and he he don't know but it was high and then um it just he took uh i think he took advil went away and he's okay. He had aches, but it wasn't um, too severe. So it's about, yeah. 
Now, you know, for the viewers, for the viewers out there, um, because of your, your profession, you're considered our frontline worker. And you deal mainly with uh, patients with respiratory, correct? That's, that's more, mm -hmm. more in line. Mm -hmm. uh, without, you know, divulging numbers, but I, I, I'm sure, because, you know, as you know, and, and you've seen our posts, you know, everything is COVID related, right? Yes. But can you give the viewing audience, you know, because, you know, Mel and I was just talking about today's numbers. Today's numbers was like, it had skyrocketed, right? But I don't want, um, how should I say this? I, you know, because of, I guess, confidentiality and so forth, yeah. I don't want you to get into that area. But, mm -hmm. you know, it's, 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 it's really hard for Mel and I to get somebody in the medical field to, to actually say, yeah, you know, I cannot tell you how much, but I want to tell you, yeah, there's, there's a lot of them. So that's what I wanted to find out from you. Do, do you see a lot of them? I mean, and, and you, are, are you folks made aware of it before you come in contact or, because I know you're, you're very, everything with you is PPE, PPE, yeah. PPE everything like that. I know you're, you're well protected. How, how, how does, how, how is that, you know, how is that handled? Um, it's here, like it's, um, um, mm -hmm. yeah, don't worry. Healthcare no. workers, they're really stretched to the limit right now. Um, from physicians, nurses, RTs, everyone, um, housekeeping. Um, mm -hmm. We are busy. Um, EMS is busy. Um, I don't. I don't see how we can keep up with, especially today. That was very high. And I, and I also um, tell people, it's not just COVID patients, it's non-COVID too. Mm -hmm. You know, when we first locked, I mean, this is like at all um, MTFs, when we started to not allow um, an escort in with patients, um, Kupuna wasn't coming in. They weren't coming to their appointments they're scared. So in the beginning of this pandemic, they were not coming in. And um, a lot of them had critical testing that they had to do. And now that we're in what, January? They're not coming in. It's like their diagnosis is severe. So. It's not just COVID, you know, it, it, it's non-COVID too. And I try to tell people that it, it, it's not just, you know, people are gonna die from COVID because trust me, it, it, it's all ages. It, it, it's all people having um, severe, um, you know, the, long haul, right? I, I mean, it's all ages, like COVID don't care. COVID don't care if you're rich, COVID don't care if you're poor, young, old. Um, healthcare workers are really um, trying to do our best, but um, we can't keep up with these numbers. It's not sustained, it, it can't. I don't know what we can do, but some, we can't. Like Uncle Charlie, like I saw the, numbers today and and and, and it's it's serious mm -hmm. you know i can't remember which doctor and i think it was dr um akhtar Mur murtaza I, I believe charlie correct me if i'm wrong but i, I for some reason I, I think it's him and melissa you probably saw you probably saw yeah, that show okay. but i yeah. remember when the doctor said you cannot count <clears throat> only patients mm -hmm. that die of COVID mm -hmm. in the in the death count because exactly mm -hmm. what you just said. All of those people that are not making their appointments, 
that are not going to their therapies and their treatments because of the fear of catching COVID in a clinic or a hospital. Mm -hmm. Those people are getting seriously ill and passing away. They're not counted in the, the, the COVID count. But he, his, his whole thing was, they're all part of it. They are not dying from COVID, the disease, but they're dying from COVID, the pandemic. Yeah. And I think that's what you're, you're saying is we have so yeah. many kupuna that will mm -hmm. not, and, and many, I know that their kids not letting them go. It's too dangerous. It's, you don't want to yeah. go there to get sick. Yeah. And they're missing out on a very important life-saving mm -hmm. treatment. And, yeah. and again, I believe it was, uh, yeah, I'm not blaming the kupuna, Penny. I, absolutely not, man. I mean, it, this thing is real and, and they know that. But at what point, Melissa, I mean, at 331, and we still haven't even started with, uh, uh, or 322, whatever it was today. And we still haven't even seen the numbers from New Year's Eve. Uh, we had the most yeah. travelers coming in, visitors coming in, into Hawaii yeah. over the last couple of weeks, you know, that's mm -hmm. the peak. How are we gonna sustain that? What happens? I mean, I, I, I know you, there's a limit to what you can talk about, but Let's I just mean, say generally in a, in a hospital, any hospital. I don't care if it's Wilcox, Kibbe, well, Queen Queenstraub. How do what we happens? did we have so many people? Right, we did get um. I call them um angels. We got a lot of um medical staff from the um all over. You want to talk about California? Our, they they came and helped us, but um everywhere off of. Oahu, like, you know, California, I was like, everybody needs help, you know? So there was some medical staff that had to go back and help. And, you know, it, it um, are they gonna come back and help us? I mean, who knows, but they're at hospitals that have probably like m more than us you know, like 300 capacity, like California, like, are they gonna send them back to help us? Cause we're gonna need it. I know your island, what do you guys have? Like nine ICU beds? I mean, we need help. And I guess, um, I don't know. It's, we can't keep on like this. You know, we can't um, continue just, um, just, I mean, happy talk. Is that what it's called? Happy talk, right? Happy talk. We're doing well. It, it, it's not. Um... Some call it bullshit. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's what I call it. I mean, I'm sorry, Melissa. I, I promise. I, I know. I'm sorry. I, I understand. My happy face, it, and I was great. Right. Um, but um, healthcare workers is getting tired. And it's not only, I, I mean, it's all aspects. I mean, it's not only like medical professionals, you have to think about the housekeeping. There are foundation of all hospitals. They clean it, they keep it safe. I'm sure they're tired too. We're all tired, you know, um, but we're gonna do what we have to do, you know, but I, I just, I, me personally, I'm, I'm nobody in the hospital. I'm just, I'm just a healthcare worker that loves our community, but watching everything, watching, like just, we cannot keep on like this. There's no way, again, I, I can't, but we, we can't, there's no way, you know? Well, you know, you are, <laughs> You are not nothing at the at at the hospital, Melissa. You're you're one of our you're one of our angels. You're one of our heroes, and uh, I, I feel you, girl. You know, and I, I wish I wish I could snap my finger and and you know it's hard because you're going against leadership that is trying to convince the people that we're doing okay. They're more concerned about the the, the visitor industry than they are about the medical industry. That is where I think we're having a problem. And I'm not expecting mm -hmm. you to comment. I don't want you to comment, but I'm just saying that I hear your plea for help. And all I hear reading read in a paper and seeing in the news and the TV news is 
how we how we can make the travel easier for our visitors. How how maybe we can get a passport now and have them come in. We don't, if they got their vaccines, they don't have to quarantine. That's what I see. I don't see yeah. the efforts mm -hmm. by our state leadership, mm -hmm. who's who's this is being run by a doctor. I don't I don't see it. And if it's happening, hey, let us know. Right. Not you, them. Let us know. Right. Stop talking yeah. the crap. And and gosh, man, I tell you, you, you know, I, I I don't like talking about myself, but I'm gonna tell you, after the hurricane. The cops on this island was spent. Charlie was here. Charlie was here with us. We were spent. And we weren't dealing with a killer virus. We were dealing with, with damage and devastation in a different way. We were dealing with seeing people die every day. And we were spent. I can only imagine how you guys feel. Gosh. Um, yeah. It, and even like, you know, people have asked me, like, don't you get mad with um, tourists? coming here and it's like you know I, I feel like like why would you travel in a pandemic like like that's crazy but at the end of the day like I feel bad for them too because they're gonna come here think that you know we have all this great capacity and they might get sick from COVID or non-COVID and they're not gonna have a bed too. And they're gonna have family back on the mainland. I mean, can you imagine that? I mean, not being able like, I feel on both sides. I mean, don't get me wrong. Tourists, you know, get me upset, but at the end of the day, it's like, why are we, when they advertise these ads of coming out here why don't they be honest and be like hey you want to come here come here but guess what we have this much beds we have this much staff we like just be honest don't we want our island to have integrity like I don't understand that part if they want to come knowing all that info that's all on them I wish them well but just be honest about it you know, everybody's fatigue. I'm for, trust me, I am so fatigue. And I know a lot of people are fatigue, but we got to work as a community to pull together and help each other, period. Mm -hmm. And that also is for the people coming in too. We need to tell them, we need to educate them that I know you guys want to come and be with us and go on our beaches, whatever. How do you say, Uncle Matt, e como mai? But be honest about it in the act. Tell them that we don't have a lot of hospital beds. Tell them that you might not, you might not get an appointment in urgent care because it's filled up. Be honest, that's my issue. And if that, tour, if that person coming in on vacation takes all that info and still chooses to come on all of our islands, then, you know, I wish them luck. You know? I'm me, sorry, I, I went on a rant and it's, it's just, I'm, Oh, no, I mean, you know, it, it's good because you're balancing out with Uncle Mel. I, I, I'm i the one over here kind of like, like I stay on, on drugs right now, just, you know, just posting. <laughs> no, I, you know, it's when I hear from people like you, Melissa, and, and believe me, you know, and you know this, Charlie and I get, get this from a lot of people, and it's, and it's just, I, I don't know, I, you know, it's because you, you, you feel so helpless, right? We, we all feel helpless uh, because yeah. there's not much we can do. Yeah, we can... Mm -hmm. can talk about it on Facebook Live, and, and it just never get the message. We know it gets across. They ju it's just not being heard, and that's what irritates yeah. me. You know, I, I, I hear you. you There's know, a I, lot of us. I want to ask you um, mm -hmm. because, and you know, this is for our viewers. You got to know how sweet this is, mm -hmm. <laughs> because we had joked so much about Boodle Boy and all of that. Um, this girl, uh, I think she thought I had <laughs> problems with ball movement because she is so nice. I get one delivery, come to the house. 
was a huge box of toilet paper. <laughs> I said, God love this girl. But but I know she's she's real strict because um, I, I see her post. She's very very strict, even when she takes her shots on her, on her PPEs. So sort of <laughs> my head is. We hear a lot of war stories from the different facilities around the state, because supposedly all facilities are supposed to have adequate PPE for all the frontline workers. But yet, I hear bits and pieces. You know, I can hear the you know the backroom chatter that that may not be the case. Are, are you well stocked at your location uh, on your PPEs yourself? Me, myself. I refuse to just use a surgical mask. So I buy my own K95. I use two masks, goggles. Um, we have like, I have like awesome co-workers that will like make our um, our hats and everything. Um, but no, um, I bring in my own, I mean, They'll give us, I mean, surgical mask, but mm -hmm. I, I rather use a K95. So I get it from um, my, um, I, I'll purchase it myself and everything. Because I hear, you know, a lot of the, um, a lot of the facilities, not, not maybe on Oahu, but even on the outer islands. Mm -hmm. so, oh, it, it looks like. It's, it's getting a little tighter and I, mm -hmm. I, I agree a lot because if the man if the demand is going to be greater yeah there needs to be a it's one hard. that you, you know you just cannot be reusing some of these PPEs mm -hmm. and I think curious because you know we only look at masks but you got to look at gloves you got to look at face shield mm -hmm. at, uh, like Tyvek suits or disposable mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's what frontline frontline workers use. So I think right. there's that whole gamut that you folks are involved with, that mm -hmm. the, the general public like ourselves, you know, we wouldn't wouldn't have wouldn't be, you know, actually uh, because our exposure is not as great as you folks that yeah. having to wear that kind of clothing all day. And I, I'm pretty right. sure it's tiring after a while, right? Yeah. That, well, what I've from the beginning, I think it was. March, my department calls me the COVID um, stockpile. I have like bottles of like like um, sanitizer, wipes, Lysol that I've been like stockpiling for everyone in our department or like I give it to people because I can't hug, hug them, right? So I give them like a bottle of like Life saw to tell them I miss them and because they can't hug them, so give them sanitizer, right? That's what I do, you know. Everybody knows me in the hospital as um, COVID supply pandemic. <laughs> um, so even when um, Angela King came down to, they did um, some, you know, ad and um her and the cameraman like I made them like the sanitizer spray and yeah because it was important like it's so hard to like get all these like you know I mean everybody's at Costco and like Sam's and buying it up and there's a lot of um people that um have jobs nine to five and they can't go to Costco so whenever I can like buy a whole bunch of it, you know, I just, I give it to them. Like everybody needs sanitizer. I'm not going to hoard it and like keep it. Like everybody needs it to get through this pandemic and I'm not going to sell it. We're in a pandemic, you know? Let me, so, let me, let me ask you a crucial question. You know, um, mm -hmm. you this a lot. You've seen in our comments on um, uncle Mel's feed, my feed about the, mm -hmm. uh, uh, the different islands, visitors, sometimes some locals, they still don't believe that wearing a mask is going to help him, uh, help them. Mm -hmm. You see, mm -hmm. coming into your facility with no mask, or, yeah, or I do, I do, but 
you know, I just tell them like, um, you know, elders, especially in our department, they already have issues, um, you know, asthma or whatever. I, I just, I don't like yell at them. I just tell them like, like some of them just don't know how to put it on the right way. And I always tell them like, like I always tell them like, I care about you. I want you to be safe. And usually when I tell them with aloha, like, like from my heart, they'll wear it correctly, you know, but sometimes it's people don't know, you know, so I try to, um, you know, um, be um, considered, just be pono, you know, um, I've, 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 I've told um, this guy, I, I think it was in the beginning of the pandemic and he was like mass hanging and stuff. And I was like, hey, I said, cover up. He said, I kind of get him. I'm not Chinese. And I was like, I didn't know if I wanted to like shake him, hug him tight, cry, because I was like, oh my gosh. So, you know, I sat him down, I, you know, kept my distance. I said, hey, you don't need for be Chinese for ketchup. Corona wants everybody. Mm-hmm. And it was just the misinformation that he received. Cause at that time, I think everybody was like on lockdown. Everybody was on social media. And I mean, you can scroll and you see somebody post something and your home, you have no outside contact. You will go down that rabbit hole and you will start reading things that just I cannot tell you the stuff that people has told me, like, you know, 5G, nanobots, all this kind of stuff, you know, but it was just people being at home isolated and just going on the web. And that's why it's so important right now that we need to get this conversation out about vaccines. We need to have this conversation talked out at home, like, we need families to ask questions. We need families to talk to their PCPs. We need families to even talk to their kids, um, even though they're not getting the vaccines because they're gonna go on social media. They're gonna read stuff from their, whoever, their high school teens and, and it's just gonna be bad. We need to have this conversation about the medical facts about the vaccine before it rolls out. So it needs to be a conversation how we talk about (laughs) the birds and the bees in our house when we were kids, because right now we're in a pandemic. We need to welcome these people that talk about the most craziest microchips and everything, because we need to we need to hear where they're coming from mentally so we we can give them the right education about it. Ask them, who told you? Why do you feel that way? Because a lot of them will jump down this rabbit hole because they're scared of this pandemic. Well, They'll yeah, think of other good. things. Yeah. It makes them feel better. No, no, please do not apologize. It makes them feel better when they can kind of minimize and and they're being informed. Exactly. Misinformed, I should say. about Mentally process it, yes. And yeah, and 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 that's the danger of it. You know, there's not as much uh, misinformation. Now, you don't see those guys. Remember the ones that were out every day telling Mm -hmm. you how this is just like the flu? You don't see them too much now. Every so often they pop up. I didn't want to say Angela Keene commented. I don't know if you can, you, you probably cannot see the feed, but Mm-hmm. Angela just uh, acknowledged the fact that you gave her the PPE. Also, Lana. Lana said that Melissa donated sanitizer wipes and masks and shields no. to her. At you know what C. brought me to your show was Lana. You want to talk about a hero? Lana. Lana's a hero. Never have I ever seen anybody so brave. Mm. She's a hero. That's what brought me to your show. Alana. 
when she put her community first, Lana. So I wanted to tell Lana, mahalo for like um, giving me um, hope that there are like, there's still heroes in this world. Sorry. Stop apologizing. <laughs> Don't be sorry, girl. That's so true. I mean, you know, we all, we all, Lana came on. I mean, I think once we started seeing the human faces, you know, touched by this virus, whether directly or indirectly, I think for us, it, 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 it flipped the switch early on. For Charlie and I, and many of our viewers, it flipped the switch early on that this stuff is real. And if we don't get a handle on it, uh, we're gonna lose a lot of people. And we're seeing that across the country. We're seeing it even here in our own state. And, right. and if not for heroes like you folks, like Lana and you, and so many others, um, you know, I, you know, and, and, and we, we got to become the army. We got to become the soldiers. You, you just said, we got to spread the message in our own homes. Yeah. It has and, to be and, a talk, just like open dialogue. And even, um, you're going to have like, of course, you're going to have like family members. Well, you know, so-and-so told me, but welcome, welcome those comments, opinions, you know, because if you just keep on, like, I don't want to hear it, the, the, it there's not going to be an exchange of education and learning. And, you know, after you give them all that info, if they, you know, they don't want to hear it. I mean, what more can you do? But you must have that open dialogue about vaccines, COVID, um, you know, I have people telling me all the time, like, you know, but I know so-and-so, they made it, and da 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 and I'm thinking, like, why would you even take that chance? Why? Why would you take that chance? And another thing is, let's be honest, we are not a healthy population out here. We eat a lot of canned food, spam, we all this kind of stuff. So it's like, we don't even have a good head start to this. You know, we don't. Um, so that's another thing we have to think about. Do we have the reserves to fight this? I know I don't. That's why I took the vaccine. And that's not even guaranteed that I will not be on a ventilator but I'm going to do it. I'm going to take the vaccine because I need everything I can possibly get to combat this virus. And then now we have a different variant. So, hey, if somebody, Uncle Mel, Uncle Charlie, like it's, it's a joke, but if somebody told me to put chicken manure on my head to help me combat this virus, I would, because I've seen it. I've seen, I've seen what it can do post COVID. Mm -hmm. And I've have, heard people talk heard, about, I haven't I've heard, heard that, rem that remedy yet, <laughs> Melissa. So. I don't, you know, it's like, that's how much like, <laughs> yeah, I you know, I hear you. It's like, I'll take whatever I can write about now and trust me, there are a lot of patients that wanted to want the vaccine. So I hope Department of Health, if you can hear me, roll it out soon because people are waiting. People are scared, you know? And I'm sure they're gonna have a, you know, smooth rollout, but it needs to happen. And we still gotta wear masks. Like I'm not gonna take off my mask. No way. I can catch it, no symptom, and pass it to my kids, pass it to my husband, pass it to somebody that I um, go to the supermarket. Like I'm, I'm still gonna wear my mask. I'm still not going to gather. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna social distance. I'm. I'm this vaccine is not a fix. All it is, is hopefully you don't go on a ventilator. That's all it is. 
Shana, I hope you heard that. Shana Wailana Kukila asked, can you still be a carrier if you took yeah. the vaccine? And yes, you can. Uh, you know, I yeah. think Charlie, Charlie explained that when he got his vaccine. Melissa just confirmed that. It doesn't stop you from carrying and passing the virus. People need to understand that. But it does. It will definitely help to save your life. Right. And, I, and, I, and it will also help you not occupy a bed at a hospital that a non-COVID patient could use to. Don't occupy the beds for this virus. Like you're occupying a bed, like strokes and heart attacks still happen. COPD still happens. ILD still happens. So we need beds for them. It can't just all be COVID. So we got to think about everyone. Why do you not think, just? Why, mm -hmm. why do you think there are still those who are are, are are still being selfish and not thinking that way? But what what's your what's your thought on that? I think um. I think first, like people are tired. Cause I'm tired. <laughs> I think, um, I think unless it hits your home, like, like hit it, like either, you know, somebody that, um, passed or somebody that struggled or you yourself. Um, I think, um, I don't know. I, I've, I can tell you this, the post COVID patients that I did um, meet, many of them, they, they knew the virus was real, but you know, um, they caught it somehow. And um, then I've met people that didn't think that it was that um, severe until they went upstairs inpatient and spent weeks inpatient. After they, you know, got discharged and they have a lot of like, you know, issues, damage. And when I meet them, you know, I always tell them like, you know, thank you for surviving, you know, thank you. I'm so happy that you survived. And they, and they all said like, I didn't know it was gonna be this bad, but thank you for all the people upstairs that made me feel like I'm important, Ohana. And I'm, like, I've had patients in front of me like post COVID like cry, cry like just so happy with all of our staff upstairs, never felt like they were a stranger, never felt alone, you know? And again, you know, I wanna hug, you, you know, auntie, I can't hug her. So I just like, just kind of like just stand there and just like, you know? But I don't think anybody, um, I don't think anybody thinks that it's going to be this bad, you know, if you're going on and gathering, I mean, obviously you don't, but when it hits you and you're all alone upstairs and the only family you have is like artists, nurses, physicians, even the environmental techs, because they will come in and clean your room. You know, it wasn't the people that you gathered with that is in your room because guess what? Nobody can come in. It's everybody in the hospital is now your Ohana. So the post COVID patients I've met, seen, spoke to, they are like, they're, they're so grateful. And at that point, I don't care how they caught it, whatever they went where Vegas, they went wherever. I'm just happy they survived this virus so they can educate people and tell them this is real. 
So if that's what their job is, surviving upstairs in the hospital to educate people, wherever they went to Vegas, wherever they went to a gather, it's, ir it's irrelevant to me. I need that story to get out, to scare people. You know, what, fear mongering? Whatever it is, whatever people calls it, but we need to have people take this seriously and it's through these patients sharing their their COVID stories. I love that. That's how I feel. I love that. You know, I think we heard that from Mr. Green last night, Michael Green, uh, where he kind of shared that he was, you know, he casually was concerned about virus, about the COVID early right, on. Right, right, right. Uh, and I think a lot of people are that way. You hit it right on the head. If you're going to a gathering at the beach or at a house in a garage, yeah. then obviously, you're not yeah. taking it seriously. But the other problem, I think, Charlie, in answer to your question, uh, is that, you know, from when we started getting close to the vaccine, you know, our, mm -hmm. our state was was really, that's all we talked about. We just got to hang on a little while more until the vaccine comes here. And they basically have put everything in that basket. They have basically given up on <clears throat> doing what they can do to, to slow down and stop this virus and put everything on the shoulders of the vaccine. And the messaging has not been, in my opinion, has not been accurate. Uh, you know, we have been told by the lieutenant governor that you, you get the vaccine, you're immune. You don't, you don't have to worry. And yet we know, you, as you explained it, it's, that's not the case. So right. I think the messaging, a lot of people are, are thinking. Mm -hmm. In fact, one of the ladies I work with today, uh, because as we get, everyone gets closer to, to an opportunity to take this vaccine, had no idea that it did it protect mm -hmm. you and protect and others. Yeah. She, she didn't know. And uh, she was quite shocked to hear, hear that. And, yeah. but I think that's, it's the messaging. Charlie talks about messaging a lot and that is so vital. Yes. yes. And, it's, and it's, not, it's not there. It's not there from our leadership. You know, I, I, I've always, you know, I, I mentioned this a couple of days ago to one of my workers and I said, mm -hmm. look at the situation. We're all on this big boat and the boat is sinking. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There is a platform about 100 yards away that can save all of us. And I look at that as a vaccine. Mm -hmm. But the problem is what we mm -hmm. have now is with the vaccine, we don't have enough people putting it into enough arms. Right. What right. is a vaccine in a yep. refrigerated storage if it doesn't get into the body? That's the purpose of getting it into a body. I told right. my coworker, I said, you know what? Mm -hmm. It's like that platform. If you know we're sinking, you cannot jump in the water. I'm going to tell you, the platform going to save us. But you cannot <laughs> jump in the water and then tell me you don't know how to swim. Mm -hmm. It's going to be too late. So either you tell right. me no, how to swim, then I'm going to help you get over there. Exactly. And right, right, that, right. Yeah. That's what a lot of people got to understand with the messaging. We yeah. got to hand carry a lot of people and walk mm -hmm. them to that point yep. where they're confident enough. Where we make the mistake, and I think, this goes for every single entity involved vaccinating our entire state is mm -hmm. it's okay to waha. Right. But like you say, right? You're gonna talk the talk, you know, you walk the walk, you talk the talk, and vice versa, right? You right. gotta make sure that you hand carry them or you walk <laughs> with them all the way to that point mm -hmm. that they don't feel abandoned. Because yeah. this, and, and similar, like when we talk to people, come on to Zoom. Right. A lot of times they cannot connect the microphone because they, they're looking at it where they said, oh, we're going to dial in. Because right. that's the first thing that pop up on the screen. No, you're going to use the internet audio. But they don't know that. Mm -hmm. so you properly train somebody how to hook up with Zoom. You're going to run right. into kind of technical problems that we'll get guests come on, but we just cannot get them on the microphone. And yeah. I think with the vaccine, you got to tell them everything. And that is, you will, if, if it's working, you should mm -hmm. have some kind of yes i was so happy for of, a fever <laughs> yeah you're gonna, have some, you're gonna have some kind of side effect what it, what it what it's doing it's your you know your antibodies mm -hmm. from crazy the thing is producing but that won't yes. happen to at least five days after the shot mm -hmm. the first one so the second one you took is your booster right uh -huh. so the, you know, dr jerome kim we've had him and, and he and he mentioned this right he did he did. Something to remember. You notice that when you take aspirin, sometimes you got to up mm -hmm. the dose. 
mistake one the first time, two the second time. Mm -hmm. You got to make two the second time. That means you need to bring in Delta Force on a second time you're going to take because our first one just never quite get it. <laughs> and the place is back in shot. That's, that's why, that's why yeah. you're feeling like crap right now. The yeah, most, the first five. one, I didn't feel anything. And that's why I had posted. I was like, I got a shot shot. Like, I got the shot. So um, even the fever, I had messaged you. I said, I hope I glow like a glow worm from all the antibody. Because it's like, you know, that is how a vaccine no, works. No, you know, you know? The, danger, the danger is when you start to glow too much. Uh, you, you can wake up all the chickens in the trees going to get too much light as you're walking back to your car. That's why you know, like glow. <laughs> <laughs> That would no. be a great, a great. Can you imagine, Melissa, if you started glowing? Can you imagine? That, I that? wish I would. No, the first time, um, our the first shot, I told all my um, coworkers, I said, I don't think I got it. Like it's a fake shot, a placebo. They're like, it was the shot. I'm like, I have no symptoms, no pain. They're like, you just wait. Second one I took, I was like, oh my god. But again, okay, so I have mild symptoms, right? Um, low grade fever, body aches, okay? Can you, like, I like sat and thought of, about it. Like, here I am, like, like, oh my God, my body aches. I cannot even imagine it to be like a COVID, like an active COVID. I don't even know how, just that, this alone just the fever body aches like i don't want covid like just this mild symptoms of no like i can't even imagine any like that's horrific last night i couldn't even get like i kept on like going on my side on my stomach like I just couldn't get comfortable and I hear that a lot about COVID patients like they're just achy it's a different kind of achy I I don't want this virus I don't no. well you know I I will share I think the closest I I've been exposed to is uh, having a double mm -hmm. pneumonia mm -hmm. You know, the PCR test because that's what they do. They do the same test when they're going to check for right. you. Get, but the thing is, they lie you down on a gurney. So the worst mm. thing that happens is when you're lying on a gurney, you're drowning already. How more are you going to drown when you lie down on a gurney? Just like all you're saying is, Doc, hurry up and do it fast. So they stick the thing up your nose and they're actually talking story to you because they're leaving them there mm. and getting that burn feeling. But what's funny, and you know, Auntie will tell you this, I go in the hospital, mm -hmm. I go to the hospital, take my bed out, bring in one recliner, because I knew if I sit up, I get a better chance fighting because all that fluid build up. Yeah. And because my son was asthmatic, I knew that if you pound the back enough times. Mm -hmm. that, yeah. And that's what they did. And then, you know, I thank God I had a really good um, respiratory therapist that, he gave me that uh, that sulfur. I had to do that the treatment with the sulfur smell, like mm -hmm. on. The park, you know? I was like, oh <laughs> my god! And yeah. I tell people, you know, if you, if you struggle to breathe, that's what. Just imagine these people with COVID, that's knocked out. Oh, they're struggling. They're on their backs. They're on their front. They don't know what's happening. All they know is they're not getting oxygen. They're getting hard time for breathing, and it's yeah. tough. Very um. Yeah, and I just, like, all I want is just, like, for people to, even if they think this vaccine, whatever they think this vaccine is, um, you know, 5G and everything, but at least um, read my posts. Like, the, I started to journal it. Um, over the past four years, I've built like, you know, a, a, like somewhat of a, like, I'm not huge as like, 
Mel, um, Uncle Mel and Charlie show, but um, people know that I love my community with my post. So when I got the vaccine, I just felt that it was so important to be transparent about my symptoms, how I felt. They know my heart, how I love them. I'm not going to steer anybody down like a wrong path. I am not trying to force anybody to get any vaccine. I'm not like, I'm not even only talking about COVID, is any vaccine. I just wanted people to read my journey that could possibly kind of get them to ask their PCP, is it safe for me? Um, whatever, whatever, even the crazy, like tell your, your PCP like, okay, I think there's a microchip in it. Let your PCP or a medical professional tell you no, like, like give you the medical info to educate you. That's the, that's, I don't even know how I got on this journey. I just wanted people to, you know, I don't want people to feel okay with this vaccine because only they can make themselves feel okay. And that is reaching out to your PCP education. You know, you have to do that for yourself. But I want you to read my post and tell you that I love our community. I am worried. And we got to do something because we're not going to make it if we keep on going the rate that we are going. Wow, wow Melissa. I, I tell you, um, powerful, back to back last night, tonight. I mean, you know, viewers, I hope you guys can appreciate uh, mm. Melissa and her journey. You know, that hour went by really, really, really quick. And um, I know you were you was hesitant about coming on, but uh, mm -hmm. gosh, you touched a lot of people tonight, uh, including myself and Uncle Charlie. And just want to say thank you for agreeing to come on and, and sharing some really really important information. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Any closing comments for the for the viewers out there? First off, I want to um to. Thank you and um, Uncle Charlie and Aunt Patsy and Aunt um, Steph. I wanna thank you for um, starting this, pan I don't wanna say pandemic, but um, loving all of us, our communities, um, bringing people on this show that not even officials can get on their shows. But anyway, bringing on important medical scientists and, and, and mahalo for being science-based, like science, science, science. That's so important, you know? And um, thank you for loving us and just getting out the message and I always I've messaged you and um Uncle Charlie all the time and you know after this pandemic you guys are going to be in history books and even if you're not in history books I'm going to tell my kids and my grandkids on on how you and Uncle Charlie saved us no don't you worry if not history books we're going to be in the comics no worry <laughs> Uncle Charlie no but I'm Serious, you guys are leaders, and um, I thank you and the aunties. I thank all the people in the comment. Like, we have like this amazing village, right? In this pandemic, we built a community across all our islands. I think that's pretty awesome. Mm. I do. Wow. So. Hard, hard, to, hard to follow that up, Charlie. No, what's you're it? fine, Uncle Mel. <laughs> what's, up? What, what's your thoughts, Charles? Thank you to uh, Melissa. Thank you so much, sweetie, for coming on tonight. I want to say thank you to all the viewers and your comments. Uh, we took a little 
we took a little um, a detour to kind of spoke about a lot of things. But I, when I spoke to Mel about bringing Melissa on, I, I, I wanted to get some kind of idea about the vaccine because we, we heard a lot of stuff in. Uh, today, I just confirmed my, my appointment for my second shot to be taken at the 20th. I'm so happy, Uncle. So, uh, you know, I, I'm going to talk to my PCP and um, like you said, but, mm -hmm. you know, everything is, um, you know, just, just informing yourself. Don't be afraid to ask questions. No, no questions. Mm -hmm. question. uh, the only stupid questions there are is when you don't ask the question, then you stupid. Exactly. Right. Mm -hmm. So, you know, for those out there, if, 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 and, you know, again, you know, we try to give the best information we can. You can yeah. Information, you take the information and you run with it. If not, wait for the next show. If we find something that piques your interest, that's fine too. But uh, for those of you that have gotten a hold of me 24 7, you know how to private mm -hmm. message. Mm -hmm. all of our, I see some new names that I haven't recognized before tonight. And I like to say mahalo for joining us. Our show, is really based on the fact that, yeah, as investigators, and I, I use that as a foundation, Mel and I have come from this background when you don't have enough information, your mind is gonna run wild and you might mm -hmm. might start thinking of things that, that's not correct. It, it's, it's, it's gonna jam you up. And I just mm -hmm. wanna make sure that everybody's on the right path mm -hmm. and you, know, um, you do the right thing and that is I may not have all the answers. Mel may, may not have all the answers. Some of the guests that come on, as experts as they are, they may not have all the answers because they've said it themselves. This is a brand new virus. This is the first time they've developed vaccine in this manner. So there's a lot of information that still needs to be uh, captured so that it can be shared with the community. And we won't know that. So in a way, many of us that are taking the vaccine now we are becoming test subjects as well, okay? Mm -hmm. We can mm -hmm. add on to the ones that did the pre-trials. Yes. Do yeah. a lot of comparison to them. So yeah. hopefully we're able to share all the information with all of you. So thank you very much. Brother Mel? Thank you, Charlie. Thank you, Melissa, again so much. Uh, yeah, all of, all of the people that get the vaccine are being, are being looked at. You know, they're being monitored. Uh, there, there's um, specific <clears throat> protocols in place for the, the side effects people to get sick. I mean, that's what happens with every vaccine. So uh, as Dr. Vong said on his show the other day, Dr. Mm -hmm. Vong said that those are the true heroes, the people that did the test, the, 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 the yeah. trials, and those yep. that are getting the early onset uh, vaccines are the true heroes. So, I mean, I don't know how many hero caps you get, Melissa, you got a ton of them, man. You just got a ton. Mm -hmm. And I remember mm -hmm. asking you a while back, and if you would be willing to come on the show after you got the first shot and you baby said, no, I'm not, I'm not made for that. I'm not, mm -hmm. I'm shy. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I was so happy when you let me know that uh, you would be willing to come on after the second shot, uh, after the second one. So thank you. I, I think you're, for you're in for having me. Oh my gosh. You're, yeah. Uncle Charlie, you know, he, he, he makes all the connections. He's awesome. But <clears throat> I just want to say that the information you provided tonight was, was just very, very, powerful. Uh, and, and again, you know, the people do what you want with it. Uh, based on the comments that I'm seeing, uh, and I, I keep looking off the camera because I'm trying to keep up with the comments, but uh, all very positive and all very thankful. And they love you, Melissa. You're well loved and we appreciate you coming wow. on. And uh, we'll definitely keep uh, in contact, obviously, and, and monitor. And, and, uh, and um, we just, you know, for all that you do in the community, all that you do with your with your donations and, and making people feel good uh you know we just thank you and we we ask god to stay with you and and, and bless you uh oh, thank every, you every day of your life uh, thank serious, you Uncle Charlie. And, and uh we just we just need more and more people like you so with that um thank you mm -hmm. again everyone tomorrow night feel good friday we'll have uh again good friday. it'll be fun it'll be fun tomorrow yeah i promise you yes and uh it was it was it was fun tonight too. I gotta tell you. It I was it. too. <laughs> I know, but coming on your show is like ah, they could. But thank you for having me. I love you, Uncle Charlie. I love you, Uncle Mel, and I love everybody in the comments. So please, let's work together. Exactly. Perfect.
Okay. Until tomorrow night, we love you guys. God bless. Take care. Stay safe. I love Peace. you.